On the feast of the Holy Family, we see in the Gospel Joseph's role as father, as protector of his wife and his child. Listening to the angel and realizing the great reality of fear that Herod was indeed after his son, and Joseph protecting him and making sure that he was raised safely. And of course, we know as the Holy Family raised deeply rooted in faith and in tradition. A few months back, myself and a few staff members went to a conference in Connecticut all about faith formation. And the big problem in the room across any denomination of faith is the fact that where did all the young people go? That's what a lot of denominations are struggling with, not just us. And this conference was ecumenical. So at our tables, there were Catholics, there were Baptists, there were Episcopalians, there were Methodists, there were all sorts of Christian denominations all in the same room, pretty much tackling the same problem, the faith formation from the time that we were little kids to adults, and how do we engage and how do we keep our young people in church. So the first thing that is blamed in our table conversation is the culture. Well, the culture is such that kids are everywhere now. They're involved in three or four sports teams at the same time. They're in, they're in plays and so many extracurricular activities that it just turns out the parent is a taxi driver bringing the kid from one place to another. And it just so happens that, yes, they're choosing that over coming to worship at church. And the most striking conversation, there is a, a Baptist woman, again, everybody at this conference was connected to church, and she was actually a part-time employee at her church community. And she says, well, honestly, I can only make this mass with my kids about once a month. Or to the service once a month, and I kind of look shocked. And she says, Well, you know, you have to understand, I want what's best for my kids. So her kids are involved in every single sports thing imaginable, so many things at school. And really, that really struck me very deeply because that's the big struggle of parents nowadays. They want the best for their kids, and somehow they believe that being involved in three sports teams and all the extracurriculars and everything else going on in his life is somehow more important to the development of their child than their actual faith life, coming to church and being raised in the faith. And I was kind of struck and actually saddened by that because I just wanted to raise my hand and say, well, if you really care and you really want the best for your child, this is the paramount, this is the most important if you really want them to truly be disciples. And what's more important in a kid's life than the assurance of heaven? So anyway, that didn't go too far. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a culture thing, and it really goes back to the family. And that's what all the table discussions went back to, is again the family. And we can blame the culture. We can just say, well, that's how it is now, okay? And I just want to roll over and play that and just say, okay, that's what my kid needs to be involved with, because every other kid is. Instead of saying, no, my domestic house, my church is different, because we realize priorities. We realize the importance of what it is that we're doing here. We realize the Catholics a wonderful gift that we're not going to get anywhere else of the Eucharist. And we all gather week after week because we believe that Jesus gives himself to us in such a real way. And we go out and give love, mercy, and forgiveness to others. And that's where the rubber hits the road in life. It's all about love. It's not about the stuff. How many kids are become professional sports players? Maybe a few. And yes, there are a few sports players that end up getting their parents' cars and houses for Christmas and all that. But as parents, you can let that go away. That's probably not going to happen. But what's the most important thing in life, of course, is our gift of faith. And we have to establish that culture in our families and in our world. Now, you're looking at me and you're saying, well, Father, a lot of us don't have kids going through school, so don't yell at us. I'm sorry I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> How we can all participate in all of this is obviously encouragement and support for people that are making those uh, tough decisions. Because parents, yes, they do find themselves between a rock and a hard place because their kids do want to be involved in so many things. And they don't want to let their kids down because for some reason they might feel like they're being left out and things like that. But we have to be a, a word of wisdom and encouragement and saying, you know, you, you might want to consider bringing them back to church because of everything that you receive and what it does for you and what it does for family life and love and culture and all sorts of things. We are words of encouragement and support and being a shining example of love, mercy, and forgiveness. We never want to draw a line in the sand and, and uh, create destruction between our families. We always want to be a bridge from them back to where they are in the business of their day-to-day -day life and realizing the peace and security that we receive when we celebrate the Eucharist together, when we pray together. 
and when we leave lives of faith together. So may we be examples of the Holy Family after the only one Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and by our families. May we uh, change the culture, starting with our own domestic household, and hopefully that reaches out to the greater community in Londonderry and the world, saying, you know what, on Sundays and for our entire lives, the biggest priority is not baseball teams, it's not like the but our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ.